I've been in gymnastics since I was six years old, and the whole time I've just been dreaming about winning the Olympic Games. Hello, I'm Gabby Vela from Deutschland. Stay healthy, be confident, be I'm looking forward to bringing home the gold in Barcelona. 1976, the first American Cup, and a springboard to stardom for a girl named Nadia. 1984, another relative unknown serves notice she is Mary Lou. Their championship link, Coach Bella Caroli, whose other American Cup winners, Julianne McNamara, Christy Phillips, and Phoebe Mills. And the wily Caroli searches for more. The first American Cup was also a free Olympic showcase for U.S. champion Bart Connor. Kurt Thomas followed. Then Peter Vidmar. And Tim Daggett. 1991, chasing the dream American Trent Demas. German Andreas Becker. UCLA's Chris Waller. USSR's Andre Kahn. Here from Beijing, Jean Shaw. Moscow sends Ludmila Stopchitaya. And from Houston, young Americans, Betty Okino, and defending champion, Kim Zemeskel. compete in a pre-Olympic international test of gymnastic talent. It's the 16th annual McDonald's America Cup. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Central Florida, where the news in the Middle East, of course, if anything breaks in the Persian Gulf, we will switch you immediately to NBC News for those reports. But first, uh, let us welcome you to gymnastics, and this being the most prestigious, the most important international gymnastics meet held in the United States every year, and has it ever foreshadowed those that we would cheer in the Olympic Games going all the way back to the first America's American Cup when uh, Nadia Comaneci and Bart Connor were the winners. And it includes many big names in gymnastics the last decade and a half, including my partners today, Julianne McNamara and Tim Daggett. They both won the American Cup. They both went on, of course, to win gold medals in the 1984 Olympic Games. And Julianne, first let's go to the women. Bella Caroli, he seems to produce star after star. He has the top two ladies in this competition. They were 1-2 after the preliminaries last night, Zemeskel and Okino, and they're 1-2, but in reverse order today. They're so much alike, and yet they're delightfully different. That's right, and that's what's so exciting. We have Kim Zemeskel, the defending champion, who is more strong and compact, but then we have Betty Okino, who's much more elegant, longer lines, but also very strong. And that's what makes it so exciting. It's a real showdown. So Zemeskel's a Mary Lou Retton type, and Okino's more of the McNamara line. And Okino announced early today in this competition, as we report to you live from Orlando, Florida, that she was serious about winning the top prize. Here is her first rotation, the vault, and it's the first perfect 10 in this young woman's career. And boy, what a vault she did. This is a true coming out. Look at the height and the distance and a great landing. That is a 10. And we'll take another look as Okino, 5-1, and she looks more like she's 5-9. She does with those long arms and long legs. When she's extended, she can look six feet tall. Again, notice the height off the horse and the distance and an incredible landing. Great job. And from overhead, you see it's just as perfect. Definitely. The landing, I think, was key for her. If she hadn't stuck with the landing, she wouldn't have gotten that 10. And look at Bella. Boy, is he happy. 
Uh, Caroli has his fist full of great young talent again with Okino, who has just shot like a rocket into the international scene as a top gymnast in the last year. And of course, uh, his other Kim uh, who, uh, Smeskel, who uh, was the one favorite to win this championship. She is the defending champion. Tim Daggett, we go to the men now. And we're looking for the man that might be up on a podium in Barcelona a year from now. And you were all smiles about a young guy from Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's right, Trent Dimas. He certainly has the momentum, and that is key in the sport of gymnastics. He has slashed his way through this competition thus far. He's had so many successful competitions dating back to last year's national championships, and then a super successful competition at the Goodwill Games. After that competition was over this summer, he said, I have two months before, two years before the Olympic Games. I'll be faster, quicker, stronger, and I'm going to contend with the Soviets. Speaking of the Soviets, we thought them to figure prominently here. However, right off of the bat, the Soviet, Andrei Khan, ran into some major problems on the pommel horse. Let's take a look. His body just gets a little bit off balance here. His shoulders are off over the pommel horse. And of course, a disaster right there. He did that one more time in the exercise, taking him out. He wasn't alone. That's right, Andres Vecker. He is a star, actually a silver medalist on this event in the World Championships. Shoulders completely off balance and another disaster. Chris Waller, probably America's premier gymnast on this event, ran into a similar disaster right here. And Trent Demas continues to perform superbly. He is either one or tied for the lead in the first four rotations. Well, the sport of gymnastics has joined the 20th century in terms of athletic economics. And this is a very important championship because, uh, well, it's historically significant for the dollars involved. Let's go down to Bob for this report. All right, Dick Enberg, thank you very much. The magic word in sports these days is money, and this meet is no exception. Believe it or not, for the first time in U.S. gymnastics history, prize money is being awarded today. Now, nobody's going to get rich here in Orlando this weekend. About $38,000 in all uh, up for grabs. The winner is both the men's and the female all around will pocket about $5,000. And I guess in the mega bucks world of pitchers like Roger Clemens and tennis star Steffi Graf, this is merely lunch money. But let's face it, folks, it's a start. It's a block. It's a springboard to what they hope is uh, bigger and better things here in the sport of gymnastics. To get it up to speed with other Olympic sports like this one, a couple of important points. All the money the American athletes earn this weekend, absolutely, positively, no holes barred, must go in a trust fund. If they were to take the cash up front this weekend, they would be gone, eliminated from future tournaments, even the Olympic Games. And once that trust fund is established, the four Americans cannot compete in NCAA gymnastics meets. That's the only distinction. So again, this gymnastics sport trying to get up to speed with some of the other high profile events. Let's go to Dick Enberg. Dick. All right, Bob, great to have you with us. We'll be back with you for direct reports. Let's look at the leaders after four rotations, four of the six for the men. That includes the Pommel horse free exercise, the rings and vault. And you see Trent Demas with a sizable leap of five tenths of a, uh, over Miguel uh, Rubio in third. Zhang Lang of China is second, and Chris Waller of USA is fourth. And for the women, they've completed two of the four rotations the vault and the uneven bars. As you look at uh, Trent Demas, the leader of the men, and the ladies' leaders, well, Betty Aquino, she leads over her teammate, Kim Semesco, both from Caroli's Houston training camp. Zhang Sha of China is third, and the Soviet is fourth, and we'll return with live action in a moment. The McDonald's American Cup Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by McDonald's. Always good food, always good value. By the insurance companies of the Kemper Group and the independent insurance agents who represent us. By Visa, official card and traveler's check of the 1992 Olympic Games. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Isuzu, for features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. Welcome back live to the beautiful Orlando Arena. We're in the fifth rotation of the six for men and the third of four for the women, which means we go to the balance beam. And this is the top gymnast in China. She's just 15 years old, as you can see. And boy, she has something to prove today. She had a really rough competition yesterday, but she's looking real strong in warm-ups today. And in her first two events, she's in third place coming into the rotation. 
She's going to mount with a press to front walkover. This is a fairly basic skill, and most of the gymnasts these days are doing easier mounts to get up on the beam. You're not seeing the more difficult mounts that you used to. This is a big skill for her also, a flip-flop layout layout. She needs to be right over the top. Up, oh, she wasn't. That's a big mistake. There's a 5 tenths deduction there. That could hurt her in the all-round standings. The Chinese are known for their elegance, though, and on this event and their fluidness on the bars, that's what's brought them into a, a world power in gymnastics. The next move she's thinking about now, in between her jumps, is a flip-flop, flip-flop swing down. And this is one of those moves that can hurt if you're a little bit off. Right over the top, well done. Very mindful of Yelena Shishanova, the Olympic champion in Seoul, Korea. Yes, very beautiful movements, very fluid. You don't see many stops, and she's setting up here for a round-off double back dismount. She's going to really need to nail the landing. Oh, there's another big deduction. She's really had a rough competition here. A troubled effort for Zhang Sha. She's from the Shandong province, a rural area, north central China. This is where her problems began. She flip flop layout into a layout, and she was just completely off the center. Her hips were out of line. And she continued her problem with her dismount, unfortunately. Round off double back. She actually had pretty good height, but just pulled it around. Too much rotation. So two major errors for Zhang Sha, which will undoubtedly take a bite out of her solid position in third place behind the two American girls. A reminder that all the scores last night in the prelimin preliminaries are a race they determine only the final eight competitors and they start fresh today and that young woman Kim Shemeskel was the winner after last night's preliminaries but they start fresh each athlete with a clean slate and now she's trying to catch Betty Okino her teammate with the Corollis and there's Okino who is currently in the lead at the halfway mark. They're definitely putting a lot of pressure on each other and I guess this is what we need in American gymnastics. We need two girls. We need the depth. We need people to push each other, and that's what they're able to do to each other. Only an 8 5 2 5 for Zhang Sha. And that will take us to the men's parallel bars and Canadian champion Curtis Hibbert. Well, this is one of Curtis's stronger events. He's gotten through the pommel horse and he struggled there. A very difficult giant swing. He, of course, Canada's most famous gymnast. Won a silver medal on the next event, high bar, in the 87 World Championships. Working very well. A little bit of an unorthodox style in his gymnastics. Doesn't do all the traditional skills. And he's working very well. Double pike. Oh, just a little bit forward on that dismount. Of course, has to take that step forward. This enthusiastic crowd cheers the 25-year-old native of Toronto, Curtis Hibbert. And we'll return to Orlando live for the continuation of the 1991 American Cup. Welcome back, Curtis Hibbert of Canada. His score on the parallel bars, 9-6-5. You're looking at Bella Caroli, one of his many outstanding pupils, and she is the current leader, Betty Okino. And this is a great event for Betty. It's also a great position for her to be in. She's got Kim Zemeskel chasing her, but if Betty can hit this beam routine, I think it can really set her up in a great position to win this competition. She's going to start off with the same mount that we saw Zhang Shai do. It's pressed to a handstand and went to a front walkover. She just wants to get up on that beam. The critical move for her coming up is a flip-flop layout layout. And she's going to need to stay right on this. Is there a disadvantage being taller on the beam? Actually, I think it's an advantage with her long line. It's very beautiful. Here it is. Layout, layout. Beautiful. She is so square over that beam and so tight. 
I think what's more impressive about Betty is a move that she's gonna show right here. She's been doing a double turn right there, beautiful. That is as difficult as most of the tumbling moves that they do. She also does a triple turn, which is being called by some people the Aquino. It doesn't hurt to have the crowd on your side like that, huh, Julianne? Definitely not. And she's setting up for her dismount here. It's a back handspring, back handspring into a double back dismount. Very difficult. That's <laughs> exercise. Well, that's it, All right. All right. Here's a... <laughs> a little better than all right. Betty Aquino, she should hold her lead. And this is why Betty is so good on this event. Watch this. Layout right into immediate layout. It is so difficult. You cannot be one inch out of line. And this is the move I was talking about. A double turn right here. Look at that. It's so small, that beam. And boy, she's right on there. Working on that four inch frame, that platform, Betty Aquino now sees her coach move over to her competitor and her friend and her training partner, Kim Zemeskel. And it is an interesting contrast. Zemeskel, she is remindful of the power of Mary Lou Retton and uh, Okino, the long line that uh, you grace this sport with, Julianne. That's right, and you definitely can't underestimate Betty's power, though. She is very strong. Nine, nine, three, seven for Okino. Oh, my. going to put Betty in a real good position. Now we switch to the parallel bars before the break. This is the fourth in this first section. Chris Waller of UCLA. He was third after the preliminaries. He's had some troubles today. Yeah, he got off to a great start on the floor exercise, but then on pommel horse, of course, that disaster falling off. But this event right here, parallel bars, really lends itself to Chris's overall gymnastic style. Watch, he has real nice long lines, beautiful toe point, extended body at all times. Everything is pushed to the max. He squeezes those handstands. Now watch this, that skill actually called a Healy twirl, two in a row, make it a D-rated skill for most difficult. Now he has to stick his dismount. It's a double pike. Oh, landed a little bit off there, Dick. His hips were a little bit out of line. Has to take that big step, but overall, a very strong exercise for Chris Waller. Chris Waller, who will graduate from UCLA. He's a modern European history major. And that effort will be uh, one that will keep him in the middle of the pack of these final eight as they go for the top money and the top prize in this 1991 American Cup. And we'll return in a moment to Orlando, Florida. Welcome back to Orlando. His first trip to the United States, this 23-year-old Chao Liang, one of the many Chinese athletes to watch in gymnastics and every other sport. The People's Republic of China, a land that echoes with thousands of years of history, a land of ancient dynasties and the mysteries guarded inside the walls of Beijing's Forbidden City. In the last half century, the people of China have witnessed more change than the accumulated experiences of all their ancestors. The late 1960s, cultural revolution, a time of chaos, a time of turmoil, Sports were banned, and personal excellence was forbidden. By the early 1980s, China began its recovery. But then June 1989, events that shocked the world. While trying to keep pace with a wave of democracy rising throughout the world, young Chinese students attempted to change their system. Suddenly and tragically, their efforts were drowned by the Chinese military. Although the people roam freely through Tiananmen Square today, the attending guards cast shadows 
that remind of the events of a year and a half ago. 1991, and China seems to be reaching out in its efforts to win favor at home and abroad. Their latest show of strength is through the virtuous force of sport. The gymnasium walls are filled with Chinese characters, slogans telling the children to succeed, work hard, and win for the motherland. China has competed in a total of six Olympic Games, but with limited early success, until their rebirth in 1984. With the government's enthusiasm behind its sports programs, China is now a building force in international athletics. They continue to dominate in their traditional sports, such as table tennis. And women's volleyball where they came away with a bronze medal in the Seoul Games. And the world has been forewarned. China's young and precocious talent in swimming and diving is very real. And in gymnastics, a system has developed similar to that which has evaporated in Eastern Europe. After school, children train in what is known as spare time sports schools. Each province has its own, hand-picking those athletes showing promise. Sound familiar? This is Chao Liang. He's a product of the system. Born in Beijing, he began gymnastics at age seven. He is currently the top men's gymnast in China, having won all but Olympic honors, and was invited to compete here in Orlando. An idol for those who follow. As is Zhang Sha. She's from Shandong province. Barely four and a half feet tall, just 77 pounds. She too, a budding force in women's gymnastics. And she'll compete today as well. So a new century approaches. This mighty giant designs the role it will play and China's youth seem moved to succeed through sports. The impressive 3,000 mile wall of China, appropriately symbolic. Just as one man can only see a small piece of this impressive structure, so it is that we may be witnessing only the early seeds of a sports dynasty building in China. And that certainly includes gymnastics. And here is Chao Liang, who needs a 9.40 to hold his place in second behind Trent Demas of the United States. And there is his countrywoman and teammate, who has uh, been delightful here, Zhang Sha. Now Liang. You know, Dick, 11 of those medals in 1984 were won by gymnastics for the Chinese. A very impressive tally. He's hoping to follow in the footsteps of some of the past greats, Li Ning, Tong Fei from the People's Republic of China. This a real strong event for him. He'll show us something a little later on. A new trend developing in gymnastics. It's a release skill on the parallel bars. Watch this one and three quarter front in the pike position. That is so difficult. Once again, gymnastics is always changing, always evolving. A little bit of a form deduction there. You notice the bent arms in the handstand. Has a wonderful presence. In his gymnastics, though, everything is so calculated. Everything is very exact. His dismount, a double tuck, and a big hop forward. You know, that's going to hurt him, Dick, because he opted to do an easier dismount, not a D-rated dismount, and still took the big hop. Well, Demas scored 9.80. He's the leader in the parallel bars, so his uh, lead is not in danger, and it would appear that we will have no change in the top three. We'll be right back. Parallel bar score for Zhao Liang of China, 965. So he holds his position in second behind this young man, Trent Demas, 20 years old, Albuquerque, New Mexico, matriculated at the University of Nebraska as a freshman, and now has returned to Albuquerque, where he's a part-time student at the University of New Mexico, he wants to concentrate completely on his international amateur athletics and not on his uh, collegiate form. Kim Zameskel waiting her turn on the balance beam. And this is the position that we most hate to be in for a female gymnast. Kim is trailing Betty Okino. Betty did an incredible beam exercise, scored a 9.937, and Kim knows that she's got to hit this. Fortunately, this is a great event for Kim. She's real solid on this event. She doesn't have quite 
the lines and the fluidness of Betty, but she's a real tough competitor. Even a perfect 10 would not catch Okino. And one event left, one rotation, the floor exercise, which may be Semescal's strongest. Definitely. That's going to be an advantage for her going into floor exercise on her last event. And believe me, she's going to try for that 10 here. She knows she's got to get something real good. Betty Okino watches as her teammate, 10th grader from Houston, goes to work. Kim mounts with a press handstand to a reverse plunge. Right here. That takes such strength. And her big move that's a key to her exercise is also a flip-flop layout layout, which we saw Betty do earlier. That's coming up right here. Kim has a nice combination coming up here. She does a switch leap right into another switch leap. It's a gymnastics requirement. She's got one more tough move before her dismount. It's a back tuck swing down. There it is. Oh, she's a little off center. That's going to cost her a few tenths. She's going to set up here for a dismount, round off, double back dismount. <laughs> nice dismount. Kim Zemesko, the current national champion, her parents in the audience applauding, David and Claire. He's a sales manager. She's a computer operator. No, no problem. One, one major bobble in the routine. That is just the one major bobble that she had is right here on this back tuck. She's just, if you could see, a little off center, not on the way over, but on the way down. This is another angle of the same skill. Look, looked oh. like she missed her hand, Julianne. That actually. She, she looked like she was good coming over and on her landing down on the balance beam. She was just off center. And that does hurt. Four feet, seven inches tall. She's a half foot shorter than Okino. And she told us that her big wish is after the 92 Olympics, Kim Zemeskel said, I'd like to be six feet, well, or even five feet tall. <laughs> well, maybe she'll make it to five feet. I don't know about six feet. 9.787 is the score for Zemeskel, which will keep her solidly in second place. And now the top German, unified Germany now, Andreas Wecker, competed for East Germany in the 88 Olympic Games. Disappointing competition thus far for Wecker. He is our most accomplished international performer. Several medals in the last World Championships held in Stuttgart. Just doesn't seem to be quite as sharp. Watch this skill, though. He goes underneath the bar. These are called giants. And right there, that's a giant with a half turn. Actually, very difficult. He's working very well at this point, you know, but he's really not knocking your socks off. It's a nice exercise, but oh, boy. That's a tragedy. That is going to be at least minimum three-tenth deduction there, and that pretty much sums up Becker's performance Well, you can all see him long. limping, too, Tim Daggett, and he has a, a bad ankle and a bad leg, apparently. Trent Demas, his lead, certainly not in jeopardy, and Becker, who was in second place at the start of today's uh, competition, certainly is uh, limping low in the standings in the final eight. All right, let's take a break here from Orlando, Florida. We go to Gail Gardner in New York in this NBC Sports Update. We're back live in Orlando, and the finale of this competition, always uh, an exciting part of any gymnastics competition. The men will be on the high bar, and the women on the floor exercise going into the final rotation. Trent Demas with a sizable lead over Zhao Liang of China. 
Chris Waller, who had the top score in the parallel bars, moves into third ahead of the Spaniard Miguel Rubio, who competes for or has Houston Baptist University. And for the women, Betty Okino will have to uh, run into a disaster not to win today over her teammate Kim Zemesco, the defending champion Zemesco. Karine Boucher of France, a surprising third, and the 13-year-old uh, Spaniard Fragua is fourth. And now to the free exercise and the first competitor, Zhang Sha. And this first tumbling pass, a full twisting double back, is very crucial for her here. She had a very short landing yesterday. We were not sure if she was going to be able to continue. Zha she goes. Cur currently in seventh place. Actually, that was a little better than yesterday, but she just is having a lot of problems. It's been kind of a mystery with the Chinese women. The men are so incredible with their tumbling, but the Chinese have had a problem with tumbling. She's gonna set up now for her second tumbling pass, a whip through to the double back. She's actually performed this one pretty well. Let's see what she does. She pulled it around. The Chinese are known for their flexibility and their lines on this event. She's actually going to dismount with a difficult dismount, double back dismount, which is what most of the girls are doing here. She looks a little tired. It's been a disappointing competition for her, but I'm sure she'll be back. The Chinese national champion, 15-year-old Zhang Sha. The leader is due next on the floor, and there she is, Betty Okino of the United States, as she goes for her first American Cup championship when we return. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, and the 16th McDonald's American Cup. And Betty Okino, the United States, she was born in Uganda, moved to Romania, lived with her grandmother. Father's Ugandan, mother Romanian. They came as a family to the United States at age two. A brilliant tap dancer in her youth. She and her brother were the junior tap dance champions from age five to ten. And that dance and her ability to move so gracefully certainly is a part of her wonderful line and look. And now Betty Okino on the floor exercise. Kim Zemeskel is regarded as the better performer in this rotation, but this is for the title. And this is a critical first tumbling pass for Betty, a full twisting double back. She's had some problems staying in bounds, and hopefully she's going to be able to stay in this time. She got it. That was probably the best full and I've seen her do since we've been here the last few days. Betty's going to show you a triple turn on the floor exercise. Something that I think the gymnastics is really lacking, and she's bringing back. There it is. That is so difficult. We're really getting back to some of the more artistic moves. She's looking real good. She's just so beautiful to watch. All she's got to do now is nail this double back dismount, and I think she's got it in the bag. Crowd loves her. The crowd is on its feet. 
saluting what they feel will be the champion in 1991. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm proud of you. No, I'm proud. That's how you're supposed to do it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it. Good job. <laughs> This is a very difficult dismount to end it. You're so tired at the end of the exercise, but look at the height she gets here on this double back. Right there. Just a comment on her relationship with Bella Caroli as they announce a 9.95. There's your new champion. That can't be beaten. And what a coming out party for Betty. Kim Zemesko, the defending champion, will now battle for second place. And $5,000 to this 15-year-old, and that's peanuts to some uh, major league athletes. But boy, you talk to these kids and they say, wow, big money at stake. That's going to be the thing. Huh? Here's Waller after his fine parallel bars performance has moved into third place. And uh, now we'll try to put some pressure on Xiao Liang, who will follow him as they battle for the runner-up position behind Trent Demas. And actually, nobody is an assured winner at this point, Dick, because the high bar is basically like the balance beam for the women. All of the releases that are being done now, you can fall off at any time. Watch that. A full twist one way and then spins the other way on one arm. Tremendous. Here's his first release. Watch. A laid out to catch him. Beautiful. He's right on. He'll show us a multiple release here. Reverse hex right into a ginger. Boy, he's flawless so far. You hear how important that grip is. He'll do a double twisting, double somersault, two flips, two twists. And oh my, boy, he just rocked that one. Chris Waller, second in the nation last year behind John Roethlisberger. And Waller puts some pressure on his Chinese compatriot, Zhao Liang, as Trent Demas watches. And of course, this is his top event, the high bar, even as a 10th grader in high school. He won a national medal at age 16. Let's uh, find out uh, the condition now of, uh, oh, I understand Kim Zemeckel uh, is, is okay. Let's go to Betty Aquino, and here's Bob. All right, thanks, Dick. Uh, Betty, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Okay. You've won the competition. I'm excited, I didn't know I'd won. I didn't expect it. Are you surprised? Nine zero. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Tell me why. Um, because I've been sick and preparing for this competition, I wasn't as prepared as I would have liked to be, and I wasn't sure how I was going to end up placing. You told me yesterday you've been suffering from the flu bug for about three weeks now, is it? Yeah. Yep. What would you have done if you were healthy this weekend, baby? Hopefully score tens on everything. <laughs> <laughs> tens on everything. Yeah. Congratulations, Betty. Thank you. All right, Betty Okino. Let's go back up to Dick. All right, Bob, Okino told us that she needs to be yelled at, that she had mental and physical breakdowns a year and a half ago when she was 20-something in the juniors. Well, Bella Caroli. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida. Zhao Liang in second place going into this final rotation, but he's seen Chris Waller with a magnificent bar effort and a 9-9-0 score, which means that Liang about to go to work on the high bar needs a 9.65 to secure second place in this competition behind uh, Trent Demas. And there's Waller pleased with his 9-9-0. And so was this uh, enthusiastic crowd in Orlando. Well, you know, that's what you love to do as a gymnast, put the pressure on the other competitor. It's real easy to go up there when you know you don't have to do that great of a set, but he knows right now to maintain that second position and to hopefully, what he's thinking now, to overtake Trent Demas. He's got to do a great exercise here. Very stoic competitor. I tell you, those moments before jumping up to the bar, they seem endless at times. But now it's all him, and he's in 100% control. Let's watch for his first release skill. Way in the air. Oh, my. Oh, boy. Just let go a little bit too early on that. 
Got one hand completely around the bar. The other one, the other one just did not grasp. He, of course, has 30 seconds to remount the bar. If he cannot remount in that time, he has to stop. So let's take a look at the problem. We're looking at a stalter skill here. This skill called a ginger. He lets go of the bar, flies away, and just a little bit too far. Can't hold on to it. That certainly takes him totally out of that second place position and probably out of the competition 100%. His second release, oh my, once again. You know, Dick, it is so hard to regain your composure after an error like that. You know, he knows he's out of it. He's just a little bit too far again. You know, I think he could have held on to that one, however, but at that point, I'm sure he's thinking, you know, it just really doesn't matter. No way he's going to score 9-6-5, so Chris Waller benefits and will move into second place, but the crowd encouraging. It is so hard to get back up on the bar after you've had two mistakes like that. He's just looking forward to the time he can get back on the plane and go home at this point. Shows us a very nice endo shoot to a handstand. And of course, he has to finish with one of those high-flying dismounts, a double layout with a full twist, and once again, boy, a disastrous performance for the Chinese on the high bar. And meanwhile, we await the performance on free exercise. Uh, she's a couple down the line of Kim Zemesco. Betty Okino has won this championship. Kim Zemesco won it last year. They're both 15, and they give United States fans real hope for the upcoming Olympics. Let's meet them more closely. Long and snap, and snap, and snap. Five years ago, she was just another little Bella Caroli project. Houston's Kim Zemesco is now catapulting off the best year of her life. But the defending champion of this American Cup faces an uphill battle to match her achievements of last year and lay that golden path to Barcelona. And you, you leading, you leading, leading, and now you, you snap. Her veteran coach, Caroli, admits it's difficult for youth to sustain the necessary high level of intensity. They have a tendency to relax. To say, Bell, I'm pretty good, you know, I'm, I'm very good, <laughs> I'm super good, <laughs> and um, take it a little bit easier. Uh, this phenomenon came in um, pretty evidently uh, after the last year's performances. And this year, Kim has more than the keen criticism of her coach with which to contend. With the arrival of new teammate Betty Okino, she's had to learn to share the spotlight. Recently, during the European meets, Okino served notice that she's ready to capture the U.S. number one position, consistently finishing ahead of Zemesco. Despite their natural rivalry, Kim and Betty have become close friends, maybe out of necessity. Very few 15-year-olds can relate to the grueling lifestyle that accompanies such world-class competition. The rigors of training beginning at dawn for the first of two long workouts. Caroli's gym is famous for long hours of training, and for these two, constant contact. I think we push each other to do better in a workout and in competition. Every now and then we'll have arguments just like sisters would. We know each other and we're such good friends outside of the gym that it helps us. We understand each other. We're going through the same things together and every part of our life is almost the same. Perhaps Betty looks to Kim as a surrogate sister since her only family in Houston is her Romanian grandmother with whom she lives. While Zemeskal is home in Houston, Okino is separated by hundreds of miles from the rest of her family living in Chicago. Betty Okino's father, a native of Uganda, met Betty's mother while studying in Romania. Two years after Betty was born, they immigrated to America. Betty's parents, older brother, and younger sister live in Chicago and keep in close touch, often through videotape and expensive phone calls. How is Grandma? We are all right here. We miss you. And we love you, too. Caroli was immediately aware of her athletic prowess, but was to be surprised by Okino's knowledge of Caroli's native tongue. I think when I first came to the gym, they didn't know that I could speak Romanian. And when they didn't want us to hear something, they'd speak Romanian. And, you know, after a while, I figured that, oh, wait a second. 
even before I start to, to step into the scene, they were already following some indications. What, what was in mind? I said, golly, these kids really, really read my mind, read my thoughts. Uh, what's going on? Somebody told them that I understood Romanian, so they stopped and they started speaking Hungarian, which I don't understand at all. <laughs> Well, the Wiley Bella Caroli success with American Gymnasts continues with the development of these bright young stars, two 15-year-olds from diverse backgrounds. Kim and Betty have found room for friendship, yet it's their fierce competitiveness, often against each other, that keeps them athletically sharp and keeps us in doubt as to whom will be number one. Well, for today, Bella Caroli has a new number one in the American Cup, but certainly this is going to be an interesting battle to follow in gymnastics in the next several years. And congratulations to Bella and Marta Caroli. They're now naturalized U.S. citizens. This is the 10th year anniversary day of year they defected from Romania to come to the United States. And normally they don't travel together. One stays yeah, back double. at the ranch, but Bella wanted Marta to be here at this competition because this is such a special day in their lives and Betty Aquino has made it all the brighter and we'll see how Kim Zameskel does when we return. Welcome back to Orlando. Right now they're approaching the break on the free exercise so we share a special moment for you. Last night at 817 Orlando's own took an emotional final bow. This is a special appearance because it represents her farewell performance as an amateur gymnast. This is Brandy Johnson. Oh, how Brandy Johnson's coach wishes she'd rejoin her U.S. teammates. I would be a magician. I would make some magic to come to bring her back. Um, I wish. That's a powerful athlete. It's a tremendous athlete, and we need her so badly. But Brandy Johnson apparently will not be part of the 1992 Olympic team. When I started gymnastics, my two goals were to make the 88 team and be known as an international gymnast. I think I did both of those, and I'm, I'm satisfied with what I've done, and I'm ready to move on. team tough should she decide to change her mind retiring apparently from amateur competition to join the newly formed world professional gymnastics competition Julianne uh, we wonder if she's making a mistake I guess all the fans would like to see her join this brilliant talent we're watching today including Kim Zemeskel well that's true I think that uh, I don't know I think in a few years down the road maybe she might regret it um, it's definitely a great opportunity for her but I guess she's ready to move on in second place into this final rotation, Kim Zemesko, and this event is her strength. And watch this first tumbling pass, the height that she gets on it. She's going to mount with a piked full end. Wow! Boy, I'll tell you, if she had been leading going into this last event, we could have seen a totally different story because this is Kim's event. She's got a new floor exercise routine. This is only the fourth time she's competed this routine, and it's really a crowd pleaser. who drove over from Houston, Betty Aquino. What a one-two punch. The U.S. Aquino and Zemesco. A 
Anything wrong with that one, Julianne? Is that a 10? No, that was good. Be careful. I, I got you. Yeah. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, Perfect way to end this competition. A 10 for Zemesco, the fifth in her career. Three of those on the floor. There's a couple of perfect teammates. Zemesco and Okino. Bob, Kim Zemesco, a perfect 10 in your favorite exercise. They love you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I've been waiting for this last event. Um, this day didn't go as, you know, exactly how I wanted to. But I'm really happy to end like this. You happy for Betty? Yeah, I'm really happy for Betty. You know, she's really been trying really hard in the gym, and it's really close between us a lot. So. She was rooting for you. A great one-two punch. See you in Barcelona. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back to Dick. All right, Bob, and we'll be back in Orlando, Florida, after we pause for these messages from your local station. They're just 15. It's a mescal on the left and Okino on the right. 1-2. Okino the champion here in 1991. And they bode well for U.S. hopes in gymnastics. The World Championships are in Indianapolis this year in September. But it doesn't end with those 15-year-olds. We want to show you from last night a 13-year-old. Check out Dominique Dawes. Awesome Dawson. She is 4'7", uh, 75 pounds. Trains in the Washington, D.C. area. Ninth grader. Look at the energy. And this, she's got the looks and talent of a new TV star. And this first pass is the reason she's an up-and-coming star. Look at that, two whips to a double full, reversing direction to a punch front, two flip-flops to a double back. It's extremely difficult. Her second pass coming up is a hiked full in back out. She's got the charisma to go along with it, too. I think that's what's so important. Well, there's no question last evening she stole the show. She wound up fifth overall. At 13 years old, she's doing a lot of skills that a lot of the top international competitors can't do. Father owns a trash company, a mother a secretary, Silver Spring, Maryland. She's gonna set up here for a dismount, a double pipe back. That was last night, Dominic Dawes. Only two Americans could make it to the final eight. Although the U.S. swept the preliminaries, one through seven, she's watching live today. There's Dominique Dawes. Boy, you just want to go out and hug her. What a delightful young talent she is. Shannon Miller from Edmond, Oklahoma. She's only 13, finished third. Sandy Woolsey, the 18-year-old uh, Desert Devil out there in Tempe, Arizona, was fourth in the preliminaries. Dawes was fifth. Carrie Strug, she's another youngster, only 13, is sixth. And Caroli really has been praising her. Shelly Stack, the only member still competing from the U.S. Olympic team, bottom right, was seventh. They were one through seven. The top two, of course, the Mescal and Kino made it through to the finals today, and they just reversed the order. Kino one, the Mescal two, and there's the rest of our team. Welcome back. Our live coverage continues. This is Ludmila Stopchataya from Odessa on the Black Sea. She's a 16-year-old daughter of a Soviet policeman. She was in fifth place starting this final rotation. Ludmila does a very difficult first tumbling run. A whip through to a pike full in. for the Soviets. 
She seems to have had problems in some of her tumbling runs on vaulting. She definitely looked a little better today than yesterday. A 9.4 better, and she can leap all the way to third place. And she definitely has the ability to get that on this event. The Soviets are pioneers in the artistry of gymnastics. That's what they have brought to this sport. Currently ranked seventh on the Soviet national team. Here she sets up for a whip to double back. She moves into third place or not. She went for it. Great job. Ludmila Skopchataya. It's her second visit to the United States. She competed two years ago in the McDonald's USA USSR Challenge. Finished fourth all around. We said, what you like about the United States? Yeah, that big smile said everything. <laughs> twisting double back at the end of a routine is so difficult. She had a problem on it yesterday, but look at it here. She had good height. She landed well. She got her foot right on the line, so she stayed in bounds. And good way that, to finish up for her. And with that performance, after a really a terrible struggle in the preliminaries, barely did make it into the final eight, uh, she should move into the third place position in this competition between the two American girls. She said she watched the Olympics in 1988 from her home in uh, Odessa on television. She said, I was very nervous as I watched that incredible battle between my Soviet friends and the Romanians and Shushinova versus Silovash. And, and Daniela Silovash, who's now retired, it reminds us that, that uh, she is so, so many uh, girls mentioned her name as the one uh, that they admire most of all. She was definitely a big favorite of everybody. She was also a great artist. 9.80, so Stopchataya moves into third place behind Okina and Zemesko. And Trent Demas, this is his event. In fact, as only a 16-year-old, he was a silver medalist in the national championships in Kansas City, 1987. I remember... Uh, Tim, that he does a sensational triple dismount. Has he still got that in his routine? He sure does. Fasten your seat belts, folks, because we are in for some high-flying gymnastics here. Trent is fabulous on this event. He'll show us his major release skill right off the bat here. It's called a Kovacs. Now watch this. Two flips completely over the bar. Way in the air. Oh, oh boy. Now his second release sequence. Here's a Tikachev. Right into a Ginger. Boy, he is just slashing his way through this routine. He's got a big one left, though. Three flips, triple back. He was a little close yesterday. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, boy. That's a major problem for Trent. So Demas in first place into the sixth and final rotation, his specialty. And whether that tumble on the dismount will cost him the championship, we'll see. He needed only a 9-0 to win it. His first release skill, he travels completely over the bar and says, there it is. Now let's watch what went wrong on his dismount here. Remember, three flips. It's a lot to get done in one space of air. Pulls on those knees extra hard, just holds on to it a little too long, and you notice his hips are behind his feet. And when that happens, there's no way you're going to land that dismount. But Demas had such a sensational start in the first four rotations, he either had the highest score or tied for the highest. And 9 4 0, disappointing for him in the event, but that'll be good enough to win it. Let's go down to Bob. No, apparently Bob is not uh, close enough to Trent at the moment as Demas has uh, wandered away from his broadcast location. So we'll get a chance to meet this 20-year-old from Albuquerque, New Mexico when we return. You should cheat. Tim uh, Daggett 
gave us an indication as we welcome you back that you can never count on uh, anything in that high bar. And here's Trent Demas in his specialty, having his lowest score of the six rotations, 9-4-0, but nevertheless becomes only the second American to win this American Cup in the last six years. Brian Ginsburg was the last in 1987. And Bob Newmeyer is with the 1991 champion. Okay, Dick, this is a twist on that old saw about the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. This was, I guess, the reverse because you had the dismount problem and you came back with a long face and then seconds later you heard that you had won it all. Well, uh, it's difficult to say that, you know, I, I did very well, but to me my most important thing is to finish up high bar, which is my best event, and to finish up with a, a very good routine. I like to finish out with a good note. But you left school early to train for events like this. So this has to be kind of the, the icing on the cake, kind of sets you up for next year in pretty good shape? Yes, I feel that it is. Um, I made a, a big decision going to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico and training with Ed Birch at Gold Cup Gymnastics. And uh, uh, I am going to school and uh, I'm just competing purely for the United States Gymnastics Federation. Speaking of that, realistically, your chances, the men's chances to make an impact in Barcelona next year. I think we have a big impact. If we can train very hard together as a team, 100% and there'll be no discrepancies in, in coaching, I think that our team has a very good chance of doing well and possibly even meddling. And we're talking Russians, we're talking Chinese, and we're talking the major players here in international yeah. gymnastics. Yeah, but we have a good team also. You know, uh, capitalism can still do it. We can still do it. We've got a lot of incentive behind us, I mean, in front of us, and uh, I think the guys on the team are young, and we all really want it. Congratulations. Keep smiling. Thank you. Trent Demas, let's go back to Dick. Well, you can sell, tell Trent Demas is a fighter. He takes after his dad, a former New Mexico Golden Glove champion. How realistic, uh, Tim Daggett. Everyone wants the American men to do well, but, boy, that's a big mountain to climb. Well, it certainly is a big mountain, Dick, but, you know, there are so many changes that are going on in the world today, and the former Eastern Bloc really dominated the sport of gymnastics for so long. Those changes are going to have dramatic ramifications on how well this U.S. team can do. They're a young team. They're very optimistic, as you heard from uh, Trent Dimas. So I think we do have some legitimate shots in Barcelona. Well, it's been a brilliant day in Orlando, Florida, for both the women and the men wearing the red, white, and blue, and we'll return in a moment. This crowd that approaches 10,000 in Orlando waiting for the ceremonies to celebrate the champions of 1991's American Cup. And here are the final results in the men's division. Trent Demas of Albuquerque is the new champion. And uh, Chris Waller with a tremendous rally in the last two ra rotations. The UCLA senior earned second place. Miguel Rubio of Spain, he's looking forward to his uh, efforts in Barcelona. He's performed at Houston Baptist as third. And Canadian champion Curtis Hibbert finishes fourth. And for the women, Betty Okino, brilliant today and had to be to defeat her teammate Kim Zameskel, 1-2. Stop Chikaya of the Soviet Union finishes third, and Karen Boucher of France is fourth. It's uh, been a delightful weekend. Julianne, any uh, impressions on the women's side? Well, I think the big story, of course, is Betty Okino and Kim Zemeskel, one and two. But let's not forget that yesterday in the preliminaries, the Americans finished eight places, eight out of the top nine positions. So we've got more depth than we ever have. And Tim, the men? Well, I think, you know, that they have a lot of momentum at this point. They did, the men did extremely well at the Goodwill Games this summer. Now they've gone 1-2 at the American Cup. The next major competition in gymnastics, of course, takes place in the United States in Indianapolis, the World Championships in September. So they have the momentum. They've just got to get the job done. That's our story from Orlando. Julianne McNamara and Tim Daggett, Bob Newmeyer, Dick Kenberg. We now go to Gail Gardner in New York, NBC Update.